Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Skull the Mask, and it's a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, May 27th. Now for that reason, and because it's a newer film coming to Shudder, I'm putting this review out ahead of time, so it is a no-spoiler review. I'm just going to give a quick little synopsis, and that's about it spoiler-wise. Other than that, I'm not really going to tell you anything about the events of the film, but I'll tell you my feelings on, and some of the things that they end up doing. Now, this one won't have any talk really about subtext or themes in the film because there really isn't that to this type of film. And you'll see what I mean when I start getting into it, really. So this one's written and directed by Armando Fonseca and Capel Furman. Uh, they've done the film Uptake Fear, which I have not seen, don't know anything about, unfortunately. Uh, this is actually an American and Brazilian co-production, so it's kind of an international film. Now, it is in Portuguese, so it is all subtitled, but that said, the subtitles don't go super fast, so if you're not the best at subtitles, you should be able to easily handle yourself. Also, I'll go ahead and say, if you honestly want to watch this film without reading any of the subtitles, I feel like you could safely do that, because it's not big on substance. Uh, and that leads me to what this film basically is. It's like a Grindhouse-style throwback film. So the dialogue just, like, it really doesn't matter. Like, it, it, the story is so simplistic, and there barely is even story there, honestly. It's mainly about the Grindhouse style being kind of over the top and the kills. Most importantly, the kills and the gore and the practical effects, which are what shine for this film, in my opinion. But what is it really about? Even though there is such a simplistic story and not much to it, it is basically about, as the title says, Skull the Mask, a mask that looks like a skull that has a tie into an old ancient legend about a being that kills people, in essence. That's all you need to know. And it's modern day, and here's the skull. Like I said, there's a lot of kills and gore and stuff, so you, I'm pretty sure you know exactly where things go with this film. Nothing's all that surprising, except for the kills, how they get inventive with the kills. I like that. Um, it's kind of an odd beginning to the film, so I think it's important that I'm, if you're watching this that you do know ahead of time that it is a Grindhouse film. I had no clue what I was getting into going into it, so the fact that uh, I went into it just thinking, oh, you know, this will be a horror film like all the other screeners I watch. Uh, it was weird to me at first. I'm like, what is going on with this? Because it looks very different. There's like this kind of like crappy sheen over the entire film, which is intentional. And that's fine because they're going for that visual look of a Grindhouse film. So it works. But at first I'm like, why is it so crappy looking almost kind of blurry-esque? Because after seeing, you know, HD for so long, seeing something like this is a little bit like, what is going on here? So it's also just really odd and weird and quirky in the very beginning. And it's fun. I think it's really fun. I think the setup scene in the beginning is really cool. And honestly, I really would have liked if they kind of would have stayed along the same lines of that storyline instead of going to modern day because... That storyline seemed a lot more interesting to me and like there was a lot more potential because you can do the kills, you know, with any, any backdrop, any backdrop, as long as you just execute the kills properly. Like they really do execute the kills in a very wonderful fashion in this film. But as far as keeping the film interesting, eh, not really, in my opinion. That said, I will say that I think that it's worth watching once for sure because of the kills and how much fun that aspect is. Also the music, I really do like the music. At certain times it's too much, but a lot of the time it's not and the music is just fun and well done and it adds to the film. So thankfully it's got that going for it. Um, because of its intended style, it intentionally doesn't look good and that's okay. Also because of its intended style, I assume that some of the acting is intentionally bad but there is some acting in this that you can tell is just bad. You know, whether they were going for intentional or not intentional, it was going to be bad regardless. And one of the big problems with that ends up being the kind of main character, the, the main character you see the most, because there are kind of two main-ish characters. Um, that one, not, oof, less, I, I would have liked a lot less screen time. I'll tell you right now, 
the character Beatriz should have not had much screen time. And the character Manco should have had a lot more screen time because the potential for the character of Manco was a lot more story-wise and just interest-wise on camera. And that individual's acting was a lot better. Beatriz's acting was, whoever that was who played it, terrible. I don't think it was intentional or it was so intentional that they were brilliant about how bad it was. It wasn't enjoyable. It really was like a wisest person on the screen. Plus, the other thing is, with how important they make Beatriz as a character, for what reason? You know, like, it's it's like an hour and a half film. It's a little bit under an hour and a half with credits and everything. It's like an hour and 28, I think. And it feels like it's longer, which sucks. I mean, you just find yourself looking forward to the kills, and it's like, okay, we don't really need the story. The story is very whatever anyway. Let's just get to the kills, man. And that's fine to some degree, but don't. it doesn't need to be an hour and a half in that instance. I'm going to say this. I say it all the time with films that feel long to me. Take a cue from the film Host. That film was under an hour. It was like 56 minutes or something like that. Don't waste people's time. If you don't have the story that's needed to get to an hour and a half, then just make it however long it needs to be to tell the story properly and show the things you want to show. Just saying. So anyway, going back to my notes. <laughs> uh, everything is over the top, even the gore. Thankfully, the gore. Uh, and that is, obviously, like I've been saying, where this film really, really, really shines. Not only do I think they shot the gore scenes really well and they look really good, uh, they put some actual mechanics into the practical effects that look cool. Uh, they look fun. They had a lot of blood. I, I'd be interested to know exactly how much blood they ended up using with the film, and it works really well for the kills, how much blood. They also have some very inventive kills and fun-looking kills. They go huge on the kills, and I love that about this film. I mean, really, it's what is needed to redeem this film, honestly. It really is. Um... Solid directing, but bad acting. Now, bad acting is typically fine for, for a film like this. Like I was talking about, like I feel like some of it was intentionally bad, and that's cool, but there are definitely those instances, like I was talking about with the character Beatrice, that you could tell it's not that it was intentional, it's just that, that the acting's bad. Like, it's just terrible acting. And that's one of the reasons that I wanted a lot less screen time for that character, the other reason being their story arc is not interesting. And that leads to another kind of problem with, with the film is I think they needed more interesting characters. In general, they're all kind of like cardboard, cut out. Uh, but the characters that you get a, a little bit of a glimpse of in the opening scene seem way more interesting and seems like there's a lot more there. Also, the character, like I said, Manko, who I wanted more screen time for, seemed like they had a lot more potential story-wise, and just a more interesting character. You could have done a lot more with them, and you could have injected even more comedy into it. Because that's another problem with this film, in my opinion, is that there are comedic moments, like intentionally comedic moments, and the overall feel of the film and atmosphere of the film is supposed to be kind of funny because of it being Grindhouse uh, and ridiculous. But I feel, I feel like it would have been better if they injected a lot more intentional humor into it. Uh, just the little tidbits you get here and there, it's just not enough in my opinion, especially when your story is so boring um, and people are just really looking for the kills at that part, at, at that point. My apologies. There are a few moments of CGI use in this, and for the most part, they're good. There, there's a, a moment or two where the CGI looks a little bit too wonky, in my opinion, to the point where you actually notice that it looks wonky. But for the majority of the time when CGI is being used, it looks totally good, totally fine. They did, they did well with it overall. Um, do, 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 do. The, the other thing about, you know, making it seem like it's a much longer film than it actually is, the story portions um, really, 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 really slow down the film, unfortunately. So you have like a really good scene where there was a cool kill and, and you're all like amped up and you're ready to go. And then it slows down considerably and you almost get lulled into an almost sleep state, in my opinion, uh, until you get to, to that next kill scene. So 
I'm glad that they didn't do something like they did with a film that I saw kind of recently um, that I'm not going to mention here because I'll go down another path uh, where they just kind of had nothing going on, nothing going on until the last third of the film and then they threw all the kills in like one chunk and then we're done with it. So I'm glad they didn't do that. Uh, but still, you know, the story just, yeah. Um, do, 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 do. There's one, uh, never mind. My apologies. There are some moments where the film becomes oddly quiet. Now, there's one, one moment in particular where it becomes really quiet and it kind of seems like there's just one audio track going at that time where it's just the noises of a few things going on in the scene that were added in post. And it's really weird. It's kind of like all the air is sucked out of a room and you're just like, it's just a bunch of padding around you and all you hear is like a few noises. It You don't have like the atmosphere of where they actually are because they're outside at that moment. So there would be a lot more noise. So I don't know what happened there. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it was this really weird thing that occurred. I don't know. It was just super odd. And in the end, uh, the ending of the film is very boring. Uh, I think that there's a more logical point that they should have just cut it off, but it seems like the film unnecessarily keeps going, and you're just like, this isn't interesting. We should have just stopped this before. So that's basically all I have to say about it. Overall, I would say yes, just check it out because the kills are really cool and definitely worth seeing and the practical effects so there were some really cool ideas and some really good visual execution with this. So I would be very interested to see the writer-directors actually just direct in the future. Maybe get someone who's really good at script writing. Maybe even the same style, Grindhouse. That, that's fine, because visually it looked really cool, and it's a great idea. Um, it's just not everyone who can direct can write, and not everyone who can write can direct. It's one of those type things, and uh, I just think you need a better more interesting story with better, more interesting characters for the most part, or the better and more interesting characters who are there, give them a larger role. It's, it's just one of those things, but definitely worth seeing. So with five stars possible, with half stars, five stars possible, half stars in play, I think I'm going to give it two and a half. I'm going to, I'm going to land right in the middle at two and a half. I thought about going to, um, but no, I think the practical effects and the the looks of the kills and the creativity of the kills, I think, brings it up to that two and a half. So I'm going to be in the middle on this one. Now, if you're watching this and you've already seen it, go ahead and put some comments down here. Talk about your feelings about the film. I see people loving this film. There will be people who love this film. There will be people who hate this film. There will be people in the in-between just like me. So let's go ahead and talk down here. Go ahead. Spoilers are fine in the comments. We can do that. Uh, also, do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you can, and you certainly can. That is the way to keep me motivated, to keep these videos coming. That is what motivates me literally with this channel. That and the comments that I get with people that interact and, you know, be nerdy about this stuff, which is basically the whole reason for my channel is to just be nerdy and talk about horror films with other people. Because where I live, I don't have that. And that's the whole reason for the creation of my channel. So, please hit me with a subscribe. I do appreciate that. Also hit the notification bell button because then you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos, whether it's a no spoiler one like this, one of the more in-depth spoiler ones that has a lot of analysis or an unboxing video or any of that type stuff. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to check this out. I really appreciate that. And until next time, keep it brutal.